morning. Welcome back. Just finishing up my coffee. And we're going to get ready to go start uh, soldering up the mahogany troublemaker. Um, get you down nice and close so you can see the process. Um, I do all types of soldering uh, 40 plus hours a week because I work in electronics. I build printed circuit boards. Um, some people struggle with soldering and most of the time the struggle is because their soldering iron um, doesn't get hot enough. Um, you know, you're soldering on the back of a pot. You need a good amount of heat to heat that up. Um, if you have too small of a tip, you won't get a good solder joint. So let's bring you down close into the work and um, give you a few tips on soldering. All right, so here we are. Um, now this guitar has um, a mini humbucker in it. So honestly, there's really no reason um, that you should have to shield it. Only um, in some very specific circumstances would you ever get any hum. But uh, I'm gonna shield it anyway just to make sure it never hums. Um, shielding is more important with single coils because they're just susceptible to any kind of interference, whether it's from um, lights or radio signals. Now we've all seen Spinal Tap where Nigel's on stage and he's picking up... Uh, Air Force radio. Um, I have actually had that happen to me before. Um, I was playing through a wireless system at the time, but I was actually getting shortwave radio signals through it, and it was it was really annoying. So, take it down to the bench, and uh, we'll shield this pocket up. Luckily, it's only uh, um, a small cavity, and I don't have to run anything um through the body like you would with a telecaster so let's get down here and do it
Okay, that's all set. Uh, unfortunately, I've run out. So, I'm going to have to buy more so I can do the back of this. So, it, cover this up with the tape also. And it creates what's called a Faraday cage, which totally isolates the electronics from outside interference. But, this is enough to get us going so we can start um, wiring the rest of it up. Okay, now I'm using a barrel jack. Um, and this is a little different than a regular output jack. We have to find the ground. So we're using a multimeter that uh, lets you know this continuity. Now on a barrel jack, the chassis of the jack is actually isolated from the hot and the ground of the pin. You'll see that uh, there's no ground there because in order to test it, we put a um, patch cord into the jack and find our ground, which is right there. And our hot which is right there. So the long post is the ground and the short post is the hop. Now, we have established that. I'm gonna create a small harness. And I like to use this braided type of wire. Um, it just looks much neater in the cavity. Um, we all seen import guitars and their wiring where they have tons of different tiny little wires and you know they just they look ugly as shit when they're done so we're gonna create a small um, harness for the jack <laughs> pulled back which is going to be our ground and our center wire which is the hot wire with 
the coating pulled back. And it's a, you know, it's a little frayed and messy, but we'll trim that up. Now what you want to do is we're going to tin that center wire. This is paste flux. Just dip the wire in the flux and turn it. Get some flux on it. Hopefully the iron's hot enough. Yes, it is. Now, we're just going to touch it with a little bit of solder. The key here is to get the wire hot and then add the solder so the solder melts into the wire. Just like that. I'm going to do the same to the shielding. It's a tiny bit of flux. Heat the wire and add the solder. Being careful not to keep the, the iron on it too long. So now both of these are tinned and they're not going to come unwound. Now let's model.